Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Tax Time Guide. Electronic tax payment and agreement options available to taxpayers who owe. But first, an attempt at a joke, I apologize in advance. I used to be a movie buff, but lately, I've really let myself go. And I don't mean to the movie theater. I mean, I'm not even in good movie shape these days. At least not good new movie shape. Every movie seems to be some kind of reboot or remake, which used to excite me, like an interesting new workout machine at the gym. I thought it would be the buffest, most yokest, uppest movie buff ever. But after being disappointed so many times to the point I'm convinced movie makers are making crap on purpose just for the thrill of disappointing me, like a cruel clown telling a kid they have a super cool surprise only to let them down with some lame mockery of the promised item, the cruel clown reveling in the disappointment they created, or more accurately, in the joy they destroyed. Now I see every new movie release as just an advertisement to go back and watch the original. Thankful they have not scrubbed all the media platforms of the old, original, good stuff as they replace it with the new, unoriginal, wrecking balls of good stuff. Oh no! They're taking out the good stuff wrecking ball to another classic franchise! As I clutch my horribly scratched up old DVDs, DVDs I never thought I would ever need anymore as we moved into the age of the internet. They still work! However, talking to people about movies is a little difficult. Star Wars comes up, for example, I bring up Luke, the entire room stares at me. Luke! That pacifist green alien milk drinking wussy! who died from meditating too hard? Masters of the Universe came up one time. I mentioned He-Man and then was informed that He-Man was so lame, he died in the first episode. And I was like, but wait a second. Isn't He-Man the main character of Masters of the Universe? And they were like, what? No! He-Man is some old dude that couldn't hack it. So the world got lame. And that's where the show starts. And I was like, wow, that certainly subverted my expectations. Honestly, is this what happened to the prior generations growing up watching cowboy movies, only to have later generations thinking every cowboy is like that one dude from YMCA? IR 2022-63, March 22nd, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today reminded taxpayers who have a tax bill that there are several ways to make payments and there are options for many people who can't pay their tax bill in full by April tax deadline. So quick recap on how the IRS wants to be paid. So for tax year 2021, for example, they want to be paid during 2021. If you do not pay them during 2021, then they pull out that stick and they hit you with it. And that's called penalties and interest. Now, most people, if you're a W-2 employee, will experience the payment throughout the year through the withholdings. Your employer taking the withholdings out of the pay so you never really see the money. They just take it out of the pay. And then you see it on the W-2 and you see it on the pay stubs as well. And you report that on the W-2s. And usually we shoot for, we aim for, we try to withhold a little bit more than is actually going to be owed not so that you can get a, a refund necessarily, but so that you avoid the stick of penalties and interest. In other words, if you do not pay during the tax year and you try to pay all at April 15th of the following year, or in this case, April 18th, then you'll get hit. The IRS pulls out the stick and starts hitting you with it. And that's called interest. That's called penalties and interest. So that's what the stick is called. They named their stick. Their stick is named penalties and interest. So. You might have another kind of payment plan if you're retired or possibly if you have a Schedule C type of business and you don't have the withholding situation, you might have to make estimated payments. Now, as you make the payments or as you have the withholdings, you might be thinking, well, how does that even work? Because I have no idea how much my tax will be given the fact that the tax law seems to be changing quite rapidly from year to year. My income thresholds have changed quite rapidly and there's so many factors that go into the tax code Plus, there's a progressive tax system. How do I know how much to pay during the year of 2021 with all those factors involved? Because you would think you'd have to file the tax return given all those factors and then figure out how much you owe in order to figure how much you have to pay. Well, the IRS, of course, wants you to make an estimate. So we got to estimate how much we're going to owe and then make the payments during the year trying to overshoot to avoid the stick that uh, the IRS has labeled and named penalties and interest that they'll hit you with if you don't if you don't do that. 
So that means that uh, if you owe money by April 18th, then you still need to pay it by that point in time. Even if, for example, you go on extension, you might say, well, I don't, I'll go on extension. That doesn't extend the time to pay. That avoids that other stick of penalties and interest related to the deadline, possibly, of those uh, kind of uh, those kind of penalties. But you still have to pay them on time. So many people might get the idea that they're just going to say, well, I don't, I can't make the payment, and therefore I'm just not going to file the tax return. And you really don't want to do that because note what happens is the IRS doesn't really usually whack you with the stick right away. They wind up, they wind up. So you might say, hey, it's okay. I didn't file my taxes. I didn't pay anything. But then the penalties and interest builds up as the IRS kind of winds, it, winds that stick up. And then at some point it will hit you. So you don't want to do that. You want to set up typically a payment plan of some kind uh, so that you're in compliance and you're minimizing the amount of penalties and interest even if you can't pay the tax at the point in time that the tax return is due. That's the general rule. So the deadline to submit 2021 tax return or an extension to file and pay tax owed this year falls on April 18th instead of April 15th because of the Emancipation Day holiday in the District of Columbia. Thank you, District of Columbia, and your Emancipation holiday. It gives us all a couple more days. That's nice. Taxpayers in Maine and Massachusetts have until April 19th, 2020. Hey, that's not fair. Apply to the whole country. Apply to the whole... Okay, whatever. I'm over it. To file their returns due to the Patriots Day holiday to those states, some taxpayers who were victims of a natural disaster, there's a link to that here, have even longer to file their returns. The IRS reminds people to timely file their tax returns and pay whatever they can by the filing deadline to avoid late filing and interest penalties. That's what they named their stick. They got their stick and they put it, they put a name on it. They burned the name into the into the wood. Sign, sign in to pay and see payment history. Taxpayers can use their online account. So you can log into your online account. I recommend doing that because I think it's going to become more and more relevant going forward. They took away the face identification kind of thing that seemed kind of weird that they needed that. I'm, I, I tried to use it. It was hard, but they took that away. To securely see uh, important information when preparing to file their tax return or following up on balances or notices, taxpayers can make a same-day payment for a 2021 tax return balance on extension to file or estimated taxes, which are all due by April deadline for most taxpayers. They can also view their adjusted gross income, economic impact payment amounts, and advanced child tax credit payment amounts needed for their 2021 return. So all that stuff, these prepayment things, which is the IRS's new thing, that's their new go-to cool tool. Uh, you got you can find those if you log into your website that can help you out to fix the return and file the return properly, which you want to do because if you don't, it might go into the processing pile, which is infinitely long or something like almost infinite for all practical purposes at that point, which could delay the tax return. So payment history and any schedule of pending payments, you can see that payment plan details will be there. So if you want to set up your payment plan, you can do it kind of automatically. You don't have to talk to anyone or anything. You won't be able to talk to anyone most likely if you try to call them or something, but you could typically set it up still pretty easily on the IRS website or something like that, possibly in your account. Digital copies of select notices from the IRS can also be seen in your account. So ways to pay electronic fund withholding. So we got the good old uh, EFW. This option allows taxpayers to file and pay electronically from their bank account when using tax preparation software or a tax professional. This option is free and only available when electronically filing a tax return. We got the direct pay. Direct pay, there's a link to these pay items by the way. Direct pay is a free and allows taxpayers to securely pay their federal taxes directly from their checking or saving account without any fees or pre-registration. Taxpayers can schedule payments up to 365 days in advance. After submitting a payment through direct pay, taxpayers will receive immediate confirmation. That's nice. I like confirmation to happen immediately, right away. Electronic federal tax payment system. We got this option. This free service gives taxpayers a safe and convenient way to pay individual and business taxes by phone or online. So you can do it even by the phone on that one. And, and I mean like actually calling by phone, like not by phone and online, like using the phone as a computer. I mean, using the phone like, like the phones used to be. 
So enroll for more information. Taxpayers can call 800-555-4477 or visit the EFTPS.gov website. There's links to that here. Credit card, debit card, or digital wallet. You can pay with a digital wallet even these days. Individuals, do you have to tell the IRS and they put you on the list if you pay with a digital wallet, I wonder? I think you do, I would think. But in any case, individuals can pay online by phone or with a mobile device through any of the authorized payment processors. The processor charges a fee. The IRS doesn't receive any fees for these payments. Authorized card processors and phone numbers are available on irs.gov forward slash payment. I think the digital wallet, they don't mean like Bitcoin, I don't think, or anything like that. I think either they mean like a PayPal or something. I haven't paid through the digital wallet, so I don't know. But if that's the way you want to pay, you can look into it. I don't have any experience with that. I'm just reporting. I'm just reporting what I'm seeing here. Cash. For taxpayers who prefer to pay in cash, this is weird. You can pay in cash. I mean, maybe that's beneficial for some people. I kind of feel like it's made for drug dealers or something. You know, like, why would you... Pay, seems kind of weird, but maybe it's maybe it's a good thing. You can pay cash if you want to, and like usually you would want an audit trail. So normally I would say you probably that's probably not the best way to pay, but if that's what you got, you got cash under that mattress in the river bank. Maybe be the best place to have it these days with the whole inflation thing and you know all that stuff. But in any case, the IRS offers a way to pay taxes at one of its cash processing companies at participating retail stores. The IRS urges taxpayers choosing this option to start early because it involves a four-step process. Four-step process. Details including answers to frequently asked questions are at irs.gov forward slash pay with cash. There's a link to that here. Check or money order. Payments made by check or notice they put this one at the bottom. They don't they don't want to get a check because that means a physical thing has a physical per person needs to open the check. So again, from a payment standpoint, that might be a good thing. Actually, you might say, hey, if you if you don't have anyone over there to open my check, as long as you don't hit me with your stick of penalties and interest and you don't cash the check for the next 30 years until you get things under control over there, that's OK. But, you know, I kind of like to see the payment processed anyways, just to get confirmation in case they lose it or something. So payments made by check or money order should be made pay payable to the, quote, United States Treasury, end quote. To help ensure that the payment gets credited prom um, promptly, taxpayers should also enclose a Form 1040V. That's the voucher. Payment voucher and print on the front of the check or money order, quote, 2021 Form 1040. You got to make sure that they apply it to the right year because it's quite possible if you don't do that, they apply it to, to like 2022 or something like that. And then, or they apply it to the prior year maybe, and then they send it back to you and then they charge you penalties and interest because you didn't pay them, but you did pay them. They just applied it to the wrong period. So make sure whatever payment method you're using, digital or actual physical check, you properly label where and what year you want the payment to be applied to. So you need the name, address, time, phone number, social security. So file by April 18th, 2022, uh, most taxpayers. The most important thing everyone with a, with a tax bill should do is file a return by April 18th due date for most taxpayers, even if they can't pay in full. So even if you can't pay, you want to file the tax return and you want to try to estimate how much money you owe. So you can still put yourself on extension. That's okay. But that doesn't wipe out the fact that the, the IRS wants their money by that point in time. So if you owe them money, you want to pay them, not be, you want to pay them to avoid the stick, the penalties and interest, of course. Taxpayers may also request a six month extension to file by October 17th, 2022 to avoid penalties and interest for failing to file on time. Uh, though automatic tax filing extensions are available to anyone who wants one, these extensions don't change the payment deadline. So be careful with that. There's two different sticks. There's two different sticks. They got a lot of sticks over there. They picked the one that they want to hit you with. So there's two different ones. You got penalties related to the filing on time and penalties related to payment on time. So keep those separate in your mind. So it is not an extension to pay. Visit irs.gov forward slash extensions for details. There's a link to that here. Usually anyone who owes tax and waits until after that date to file will be charged a late filing penalty of 5% per month. So if a tax return is complete, file, filing it by April 18th is always less costly, even if the full amount due can't be paid on time. IRS free file is an easy, quick way to file that 
uh, is available to eligible individuals and families who earned uh, $73,000 or less. So you got that free file option. There's a link to the IRS free file here. You can find it on the IRS website, irs.gov, of course. Pay what you can. So if you can't pay the, the general rules, you want to pay what you can. So what are you trying to do? If you can't pay the tax, you know you owe money, you can't pay it. You want to make sure that you're still in compliance because if you're not, the IRS is likely to hit you with the, with the sticks and you want to pay as much as you can typically because even if you're in compliance by setting up a payment plan, you, you're still going to be charged some interest uh, on it and possibly some penalties. And then you want to set up a payment plan that that helps you to be in compliance and once again lowers the number of penalties and interest, which is the goal. So interest plus the late payment penalties will apply to any payments made after April 18th. Making a payment, even a partial payment, will help limit penalties and interest charges. The fastest and easiest way to pay a personal tax bill is with direct pay, available only on irs.gov. For a rundown of other payment options, visit irs.gov forward slash payments. There's a link to that here. The IRS urges taxpayers to first consider other options for payment, including getting a loan to pay the amount due. In many cases, loan costs may be lower than the combination of interest and penalties the IRS must charge under the federal law. So you might say, hey, if they're going to charge me penalties and interest, maybe I'll just take out a loan and then I'll pay it off with the loan and then I'll pay back the loan, which I got to pay interest on. But possibly it's going to be less than the penalties and interest charged by the IRS possible. You could be happy. So normally the the late payment penalty is one half of 1%, 0.5% per month. That is the interest rate adjusted quarterly is currently 3% per month compounded daily. If a loan isn't possible, the IRS can often help online payment plans. Most individual taxpayers qualify to set up an online payment plan with the IRS and it is only takes a few minutes to apply. So you can do it online. You don't got to talk to anyone or anything like that about the fact that you, you know, like you don't want to pay, you can't pay the tax bill or anything. You should be able to do it automatically. So make sure to be proactive and do that so that you avoid the sticks, the sticks, not the sticks. Applicants are notified immediately if the request is approved. No need to call or write to the IRS. The IRS notes that online payment plans are processed more quickly than requests submitted with electronically filed tax returns. If a taxpayer just filed their return and knows that they'll owe a balance, they may be able to set up a payment plan online before they even receive a notice or bill. There are two main types of online payment plans that you should be aware of. There's a short-term payment plan. The payment period is 180 days or less and the total amount owed is less than 100,000 in combined tax penalties and interest. There's no fee for setting one up though interest and late payment penalty continue to accrue. And then there's the long payment plan. Uh, payments are made monthly and the payment owed must be less than $50,000 in combined tax penalties and interest. If the IRS approves a long payment plan, also known as an installment agreement, a setup fee normally applies. So there's a link to the setup fee, so you got to make a payment to set up the plan. But low income taxpayers may qualify to have the fee waived or reimbursed. So if you're a low income taxpayer, you might be able to look into further how to waive the setup fee. In addition, for anyone who filed their return on time, the late payment penalty rate is cut in half while an installment agreement is in effect. This means that the penalty accrues at the rate of one quarter of 1% or 0.25% per month instead of the usual one half of 1% or 0.5% per month. Taxpayers who do not qualify for an online payment agreement may still be able to arrange to pay in installments. See additional information on payment plans for more information. Other payment options. Some struggling taxpayers may also consider using uh, these other payment options. We got the delayed collection. If the IRS determines a taxpayer is unable to pay, it may delay collection until their financial condition improves. However, the total amount owed will still increase because penalties and interest and charged uh, until paid in full. Taxpayers can request a delay by calling the phone number on their notice or 800-829-1040. Then we have the penalty relief. Some taxpayers qualify to have their late filing or late payment penalties reduced or eliminated. So if you get the payment and penalties, sometimes you might, it's like kind of like calling the credit card company and being like, hey, come on, 
this is the first time I've ever had a problem. Wave the penalty for me, would you? And something like that. And you can do you could do that sometime if you're in good standing with the IRS, possibly you may be able to do that. This can be done in a case by case basis based on reasonable cause. So there's a pretty vague term. I have reasonable cause to eliminate these these penalties and interest, please. Would you remove them? Alternatively, where a taxpayer has a history of compliance, the IRS can typically provide relief under the first time abatement program. So notice, of course, they're trying to keep people in compliance. So if you are in compliance, they're more likely to, to waive penalties and interest or something like that uh, be, in, in a first time abatement type of program kind of situation, similar to the credit card situation. If you pay your credit card on time and everything and you get a late payment one time or something like that, they're willing to work with you oftentimes. But if you do it all the time, they're like, no, I don't think so, because I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Visit irs.gov forward slash penalty relief for details. There's a link to that. Then you got the offer and compromise. Some taxpayers qualify to settle uh, their tax bill for less than the full amount due through a offer and compromise. Though there is typically a $205 non-refundable application fee, it is generally waived for low-income taxpayers and for offers based on a doubt as to liability. The offer and compromise pre-qualifier tool, there's a link to that here, can help determine eligibility for, for anyone interested in applying. Now note that the offer and compromise is one of those types of things that you see advertisements for and whatnot for people saying, hey, we'll lower your tax bill. If your tax bill is over 10,000 or whatever, 15, whatever they say, then we can lower the tax bill. Usually they're talking about kind of a comp offer and compromise or that's the main tool that they're kind of alluding to. So just realize that uh, that you want to make sure that you're going to a legitimate place uh, if you're seeking help with an offer and compromise. And because a lot of times you go to it like an, an advertisement, these these commercials might just be an advertisement, not even a really a firm that then allocates you to a firm, which means you don't know re exactly who you're you're working with. So you want to make sure that uh, that uh, be aware of that. And also you can get a pretty good jump on whether or not you would qualify for the offer and compromise because it's all basically laid out in, in the code. So you can, you can read up on it yourself and whatever and everything. And clearly the idea would be similar to an idea between a bank lending money and the individual. If the individual can't pay back the money, then the bank would be incentivized to lower the amount that is going to be paid would be the general idea because they're not going to get the money anyways and you got the similar kind of thing here so you would under you would think what would the what would the government want in order to give an offer and compromise they want a personal basically income statement and balance sheet they want to know how much stuff you have how much you are taking in to determine whether or not uh, they, you should qualify for for an offer and compromise possibly lowering the tax bill due to the fact that you're not going to be able to pay the tax bill, which would be beneficial then to lower it on both sides of the transaction on the payer side and the recipient side. So the IRS reminds taxpayers that they have rights and protections through the collection process. For details, see Taxpayer Bill of Rights and Publication 1 for rights as taxpayers. For more information about payments, the topic uh, number 202, Tax Payment Options on IRS.gov. Taxpayers should know before they owe. The IRS encourages all taxpayers to check their withholding with the IRS, the Tax Withholding Estimator. This news release is part of a series called the Tax Time Guide, a resource that helps taxpayers file an accurate tax return. Additional help is available in Publication 17 for Federal Income Tax. There's a link to all this wonderful stuff here, and there'll be a link to this in the description.